attacking unidentified Americans. That's a quote from the Obama administration. Remember when we used to have to have a reason and legal authority before the government kills somebody, especially American citizens? But they also point out a memo released by the Justice Department claims that the government has the right, this is quote, has the right to kill U.S. citizens if they pose an imminent threat. You have to understand that this is the same government that in the NDAA, Section 1021, said that they could do that, that they could hold people indefinitely without trial by the military because they had an authorization for the use of military force. And that authorization declared the entire world as a war zone. That includes the domestic continental United States. We are, in their eyes, in a war zone. And it doesn't matter to them whether we're American citizens or not. And if they get away with these drone strikes, killing American citizens abroad, just as they kill others abroad in assassinations, they will do it here on domestic soil. It's just a matter of time. And speaking of the war in Afghanistan, senators are now seeking a vote on an open-ended Afghan war. This is reported from antiwar.com. They say the Afghan war will nominally end the end of December this year, at least for campaigning purposes. U.S. troops, however, will remain there and in combat roles, quote, through 2024 and beyond, according to a bilateral security agreement that they're now pushing for Afghanistan to sign. Now, get this. This agreement is billed as a, quote, executive agreement between our executive regime leader and the Afghan president. So it's just those two presidents. And they say here that they don't have to have parliamentary approval. That would not be necessary. Now, one person who's pushing back against Obama's executive orders in this area is Senator Jeff Merkley, a Democrat of Oregon. He says he was critical of the lack of a vote, saying that it amounted to putting the, quote, military on autopilot. Yeah, we've got uh, the year of action that's coming from Barack Obama. How about a decade of action? They don't want to leave an area that is so profitable for the American government. They have taken poppies and they've gone from less than 10% of the world supply for heroin and other poppy-based opiates. They have now taken that to 90% of the world supply. It is vital for them to stay there. They also control lithium in Afghanistan. They have most of the supply on that and you know they use that in batteries. That is why we're there. It's not about terrorism. They're terrorizing the people of Afghanistan, and they're going to be terrorizing Americans if we don't stop it. Now, in another article, it says, lights out for the NSA. In Maryland, lawmakers are pushing to cut water, electricity to the spy agency headquarters. This is the nerve center in Fort Meade that's targeted by this bill. This is eight Republicans out of the 141-member Maryland House of Delegates. Now, it's interesting to remember that this has been proposed, especially started in Utah, where the Utah Data Center is, and people there were pointing out the massive amounts of water that were being used to cool that facility in an area where water is very dear, very scarce. But no legislation was introduced there. However, in Arizona, California, Tennessee, Washington, and other states, bills have been introduced into the state legislatures that model the Tenth Amendment Center's movement here. Now, in another update to fluoride, we see that yet another Harvard study. Remember, there was a Harvard study that came out that showed that it lowered IQ rates in China? Well, now what they've done is they've looked at a combination of IQ studies, and they find that on average, it is lowering IQ by seven IQ points. In a metadata analysis, researchers from Harvard School of Public Health and China have for the first time combined 27 studies and found strong indications that fluoride may adversely affect cognitive development in children. Based on the findings, they say that this risk should not be ignored. And this is the thing that they found, the mechanism that they found from one lady's PhD paper. This was Jennifer Luke. She wrote in her 2001 scientific article that was part of her PhD dissertation, she said that the fluoride accumulates in the brain specifically around the pineal gland. So that's something to be concerned about. We can try to wake up different city councilors, state governments to make them stop putting this in the water. We're forced to pay for it. And when you see something come out like this, you have to ask yourself, how can they justify mass medication in the water supply? Because when you do that, you're getting a very different dosage for people by just dumping it into the water supply. You cannot control the dosage. And the dosage, even if it were safe and effective, and it's not safe or effective, but even if it were, the dosage would be different for a person who is an adult male versus a child versus a fetus. How do you control that? Well, you can't if you just dump medication in the water. We should never accept forced medication that way. Unfortunately, we cannot 
roll it back as easily as we would like. So you need to take control of your own health. You need to try to protect yourself and your family. One of the ways you can do that is with iodine. Now we see in another case from the TSA, they're still coming after people at the airport when they know that there is no threat from either terrorist at the airport or at airplanes. And they've admitted this in their own internal documents. We've seen that come out from John Corbett. We've seen it confessed in the blog of the former TSA agent. Now this time they actually humiliated a man who has been a cancer victim by saying he's wearing a diaper. Totally humiliated the man. That's what this is all about. It's about not only taking away our freedom, but our dignity. And they continue to do that. Now, right after the break, we're going to be back with an interview with a gun owner who had both his first and second amendment rights taken away. That's something that we, they're not going to respect one of the Bill of Rights. They're not going to respect the other ones either. And then after the program, we have an excerpt from Police State 4. And you're going to see that it's not just in South Carolina and Ohio, but in this case, it was in Iowa, where the military was training in a scenario to take away gun owners' guns. Stay tuned. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Now, Eric Holder has been recorded telling people that it's his intention to brainwash the public about guns, to make them very afraid. Now, this next person we're talking to, Derek Poe of Golden Triangle Tactical in Beaumont, Texas, had that happen to him. In his store, in a mall, he had his gun taken away from him because people said they were terrified. They were afraid they were going to die just by seeing someone hold a gun. But this is also a case of First Amendment protection because as he moved to his new location and was advertising his store opening, he had that shut down in a manner similar to what happened to the InfoWars crew in Dallas. So this is both the First and the Second Amendment. We are not going to be put in the closet either as gun owners or as protesters. We have a right to be out in public to engage in these legal, constitutionally protected activities. And we want to talk to him and find out what happened in Houston. Now, you're moving locations from a mall, and this is your grand opening at the new location. Tell us why you left the mall. We left the mall right after they put the, uh, the 30 6 sign up on the door. We mainly left, we're not going to subject our employees and all our customers to unsafe working environment, which is what a gun-free zone is, which is what the mall became. Now, you had been hassled by the mall back in December 28th when they arrested you or gave you, actually, they, they confiscated your gun, didn't they? 
The police did. But they didn't arrest me at the time, but they did confiscate my gun. They didn't even, they didn't issue a citation, nothing. They just, all they did was stole my firearm. They said that you were carrying it in a manner calculated to alarm. You had it slung over your back, as you report? I uh, slung it over my back, the barrel facing down. I even had items in my hand. So it's it very clear and apparent that I wasn't going to do anything illegal. And I was wearing my work uniform for a tactical store in that very mall. Right. And so you've got a store in the mall. You're walking legally, carrying uh, openly carrying a, a uh, rifle that's slung over your back. And yet, because some witnesses say that they are terrified, one of them said they thought they were going to die. <laughs> So, so they called the police, and the police took your took your weapon, and then the mall put up signs prohibiting uh, gun carry. Is that what you're saying with the thirty out six sign? Yes, sir. Yeah, put up a thirty out six sign like a a week later. Mm -hmm. So you decide that you're going to. So, so you decide that you're going to move to a location outside of the mall. You had your right. grand opening this last weekend, and you had somebody standing out by the road as we see businesses doing all the time with a sign waving to the location. In this particular instance, the guy was wearing a banana suit and he had an AK-47 slung over his shoulder, which is legal. Right, yeah, and uh, we put him in a banana suit, figured uh, he'd look a little bit less alarming this time, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Evidently, people were afraid of that as well, or the police were hassling it. Now, in between these two incidents, between the time that uh, you had the incident at the mall and between this incident with your grand opening this weekend, there was an open carry rally in Beaumont. Tell us about that. Yeah, there's uh, there's one actually a week ago after after this open carry event. And, and it's funny because the cops were pretty mad at why he should be open carrying. And that was one of the arguments I was making when I walked down there to help out my employee who's getting uh, illegally detained. I say, y'all helped us open carry a week ago, you know, and the cop was like, was basically saying that's different. That's because we had police there. And if you people just open carry, it'd be like Somalia, is what he told me. Well, you know, what we saw when we went to an open carry rally at the Alamo in San Antonio was that at the rally, when there was about a thousand people there openly carrying, legally carrying firearms strapped over their back, the police stood their distance. They took pictures of everybody constantly, but they didn't harass anybody. But as soon as it dwindled down to just a few people left, most of the people had gone home. They started hassling gun owners again for open carry. That is legal in Texas. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's, and it's also what we've seen here with this limitation of people standing off of the road. I don't know what the laws there are in Beaumont, but we've had a lot of problems in Dallas as well. We were up there protesting, the InfoWars crew was protesting the fact that they were trying to shut down free speech centered around the JFK 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. They didn't want people really talking about it outside of their official dog and pony show. So they had a lot of free speech limitations that were based on this idea that you're going to distract traffic. And now Dallas has kind of doubled down on that. They now have a 75 foot setback from the road is your store even 75 feet back from the road? No, it's right along the main highway. Yeah, so you probably, in many cases, people, in a practical manner, they don't have that much of a setback anyway. But it's not any more distracting to have somebody standing out in front of a, a store waving a sign that the store is having no, a special or grand exactly. opening. They, they do it all the time. Several companies do it. There's a place called Liberty Tax. That's Woman Dress Statue of Liberty that does it. Mm -hmm. They have a... A mattress company that does it, Little Caesars, of course, does it. We did it, and what, of course, what happened with us? They cited us, saying we broke a, a city violation for we're soliciting business alongside a road. Yeah, so it's selectively enforced, and we see this in places like Dallas. They typically only selectively enforce these setbacks with people who are alongside the road. They typically only enforce that when it's something that is politically unpopular. And that would be free speech protesting of something political or if somebody is exercising their Second Amendment rights openly. That's right. typically what I we're mean, seeing. Is that what you're seeing? Me, our, our, some of our, 
people I thought were proponents of the Second Amendment have even been coming after me. I've been, I've been getting it from both sides. People that who are proponents say, yeah, well, you're going to ruin it for the rest of us, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, ruin it for the rest of us? How? It's already ruined for the rest of us. They say we can open carry, but when we do, this 